the Moss Trophy at the 80th members meeting underway and it's a good start from the pole man Alex Bumpkin or oh, the Chevy doesn't move at all does finally get going but actually from the outside James Cottingham in the AC Cobra going around the outside and I think he's taken Alex Bumpkin yes he has it is the initial advantage to James Cottingham and now Alex Bumpkin finding himself under pressure from Oliver Bryant well if you've got lots of grunts it's rude not to make the most of it and certainly from the outside of the front row in that white AC Cobra with the black roof and the back wheel James Cottingham has got clear, but through the course of the lap, the flow, the wonderful flow the Jaguar E-types have should enable the front two cars, Alex Bunkham and Ollie Bryant, to fight back. But uh, exactly what needed to be done for the AC Cobra of James Cottingham, third became first. It did, beautifully done. And we've got some great battles going on further down the field as well. The uh, John Hugenholtz in the number 14 Ferrari just getting past there, that silver Ferrari. But we'll also be keeping an eye on, there it is, number 14. You can see he's coming back again uh, in the fight. So there is John Hugenholtz. This is a car that raced in Italy in the 1960s. And Hugenholtz has had it for some 40 years pretty much now. Uh, well, just a, yeah, just under that and uh, he is enjoying racing he always loves racing here at goodwood number 77 e-type as well that is guy zeiser and that's the that's a car that's been rebuilt by the ckl team look at this three abreast with the austin healy in the middle that's a, a rally it is a rally car originally that austin healy a winner in key rally the alpine rally i see that it's still got the labels on it and the rally lights on it which is fun to see and what you saw in that little battle the uh, the green and yellow lotus elite just had no answer to the power of the austin healy and uh, all around him and fell back enormously on the straight but up front what's the gap first to second eight tenths of a second james cottingham that brilliant start in the ac cobra number 59 alex bunkham started on pole he's down in second place but he and Ollie Bryant and their E-types will be fighting absolutely tooth and nail to get on the tail of the race leader. Well there is another of the Lotuses as you mentioned and that is Andrew Cocotti who has dropped back a little bit from where he started because he ended up starting fifth but as you mentioned with the less power in the Lotus Elite he's very difficult off the line so that's cost Andrew a bit of time. Uh, we saw Andrew earlier on today having a good second place finish in the Gurney uh, Cup race and uh, and just one thing I really want to look out for is uh, Brenoir Trollier. Yes. We said he started, he should have been starting fifth. He started right at the tail of the field. He gained possibly a dozen places. So look out for the number 80 e type working its way forward. But also look out for Alex Buncom getting closer and closer to the race leader, James Cottingham's AC. And certainly Bob Neville's crew have done a fantastic preparation job on that dark blue e type. But Ollie Bryant not exactly falling away in third place. No, he isn't, is he? He's still part of that. Then you've got Spears in fourth position. And then. There were others coming over the line. There's the first of the Aston Martins. And then just looking for Andrew Cocotti in the Lotus. He's dropped back a little bit now. A real, real mix of E-types and the Austin Healy's there as they try to come through. Back to the battle for the lead, though. And for the moment, James Cottingham is not getting away by very much, you have to say, with Alex Buncombe, who had that pole position right on his tail now. Right, Jaguar fans, the good news is uh, James Cottingham is not getting away. He's been hauled in just five tenths of a second clear. The top three cars, the AC Cobra and those two E-types of Buncombe and Bryant, 1.1 seconds covers them. Then they've got three seconds back to John Spears in the red AC, the second one. He's got Rory Butcher, or is it William Paul? We'll find out. <laughs> in behind in fifth place, but the first three, as expected, are getting away. The big question, Ben, is in which order will they finish? Yes, it is. Oh, we've got a problem for the number 11 car there. That's uh, Robert Kaufman in his E-type. Hope they can get that out of the way. The marshal's doing a great job. Leaders still very, very close. A oh, little touch of the grass for Alex Buncombe. Hand out of the window there from oh. AC, as the AC Cobra up front. Is there a problem for James Cottingham or had there been the a little mistake before? Wet yellows. That well. was where they were pushing the car out of the way. So he saw the yellows and he, he I think he just responded to that and in many ways that just shows that uh, a lot of mortals could be out and not have the extra brain power and capacity but leading the race James Cottingham's got the experience and he didn't want to be clouded from behind absolutely the right thing to do but these are pro drivers doing an astonishingly good job AC Cobra versus Jaguar E-Type yeah I could watch that any day of the week and I could oh. certainly watch an overtaking maneuver like that from second place into first from Alex Bunker but what a move down into Woodcut that was an excellent move I did wonder whether uh, Cottingham was going to shut the door a little bit more but he didn't left hand drive Cobra versus right-hand drive E-Type. So the, the gap between the two drivers is bigger than you get in some cases. Straight line speed from the Cobra, but the E-Type was very effective.
effective under braking. Yeah, but what I'm wondering there, Ben, they slightly delayed themselves by backing off the yellow flags going to Labberton. It may just be that the AC Cobra, James Cossingham, backed off a little too much and couldn't use the grunt. And the power's put down sooner by Alex Buncombe. He's not only taken the lead, he's starting to hair clear. Wow, how's this one going to shape out? But they're coming up into traffic uh, already, so that can often complicate things. So let's just see if they manage to get through this, OK? Further down the order as well, we've got some good racing going on. Further down, uh, number 14, as Hugenholz in that lovely Ferrari, and then a, a real group of E-types. Uh, Richard Mines is in there. And that's Rich, ah, uh, this, yeah. uh, Benoit Trellier, who's just gone past the car with the uh, Cut 7 livery on board. And he was the driver who qualified fifth, ended up starting right at the tail of the field. But uh, you don't need a stopwatch to tell us, tell you that he's one of the quickest drivers out there. How high has he climbed? Already up to 13th position. More places will come his way before this lap is over, that's for sure. Possibly even into the top 10. Yeah, three times Le Mans winner. Plenty of pace, a man who's uh, won championships in Japan in both Formula Nippon and the GT Series. There he is, number 80. He is a very talented, very experienced racer, and he's moved up extremely quickly from the back up to 13th when he crossed the line last time. He's going to be higher than that when he comes back across the line. When he's challenging for 10th place, that's for the moment in the hands of Craig Davis, number 26. Very similar liveries of their cars, that gunmetal... Uh colour on the flanks. Is there enough space to go up the inside? You know what? Craig Davis is a tough driver yeah. and he's a, if you want to come past, I'm not making it easy for you. <laughs> Absolutely. You will make him work hard for it. But that's fair enough. It's racing. Has a quick glance in his mirror before he comes into the chicane. Chucks it in. There's Craig. But Benoit is right on it and he's going to try and get the better exit. Actually, he doesn't get a super exit out of there. It's good straight line speed in the uh, Craig Davis car. Yeah, in fact, just looking at that, it was a very smooth exit, and I thought it would uh, yield advantage there for Ben Trollier, but it didn't. Plenty of grunt for Craig Davis in behind again. Of course, you've got the uh, soft tops, the non-fixed head coupes, and the one running in behind them should be, well, up from the back of the grid. Nick Mayton, who was propelled from mid-grid, whatever the transgression was, that started at the back. So like Ben Trollier, 80 and 74 have been working their way up. They're halfway up the order, and they're definitely advancing. Look, the white car right heat up with the red roof closing in as this battle in front is getting very fruity between Craig Davis and Ben Collier. 26 ahead of, 20, ahead of number 80. Yeah, ninth and 10th at the moment and uh, a little chance here for Trillier who's going to try and outbreak around the outside and then can he still get into the corner ahead of Davis? Yes, he can just about. He gives him space. Fair play, but also joining in the fun and games is the number 74 of Nick Mayton. Uh, let's see whether he's going to be able to get past as well. He's got a good run as they go down the straight, but no doubt about it, uh, Trellier has managed to go through, and that has brought him up into ninth position. So the next one he's going after is John Hugenholtz now in the Ferrari. See how he can get a bit further up the order. Meanwhile, Alex Bunkham is still our race leader with a second advantage over James Cottingham. Yeah, and that was the fastest lap of the race. Went dipped under 1 minute 30 seconds. A very, very quick time from uh, Alex Buncombe. Second generation, was it third generation racer? Yes, in third generation racer from the Buncombe family from the West Country. Childhood friend of uh, Jensen Button. Grew up doing cars together and have raced together in British GT and other things around. So great to have two pals enjoying their racing so much. But uh, one second, almost precisely, race lead for Alex Buncombe over the AC Cobra of James Cossingham and James having a purple patch in his racing career at the moment. But it's Trellier again who's trying to come past at the moment in the number 80 E-Type Jaguar. He's doing a fantastic job. Hugen Holtz up ahead of him. Very experienced but uh, I'm not sure he's going to hold, uh, hold on for too long. It was a bit of a wide... Oh, that's Spears. Spears who was fourth running place. in fourth, wasn't he? And uh, he's dropped a couple of places there. I think he's dropped rather more than that. I think he's, uh, well, let's just wait and see to the next timing sector. But just the smallest of margins running that little bit wide, but uh, had to be very careful coming back onto the circuit. But as he accelerates hard towards the kink, as he comes back towards Woodcut, he'll be absolutely cursing. Right, he's fall, fallen behind car number 62, which is Gregor Fiskin. So he's fallen and he's ahead of Nick Ditting. So he's only fallen to sixth place. Well, that would be frustrating. Yeah, it will be frustrating. But uh, obviously a little error, I would think, that he made just running the car out wide as the battle between the E-types continues. And here's the battle up front. It's still close. It's not much difference. The gap has come back down with a new fastest lap by James Cottingham in the Cobra. So he's got the gap back down to 0.681 of a second. And they are still dealing with traffic as well. That's something that, that you can see. They're catching up to one of the Jaguars, the XK120, the only 120 actually in this race. The car rebuilt to uh, 
the Podro style, and uh, they're going to get past that very quickly indeed. Yeah, that was the slowest qualifier in the field, and hardly surprisingly, because the world moved on very quickly when the E-Types came to town, and the AC Cobras with all the power, so Chris Scully keeping out of the way there, but certainly Alex Buncombe going right to the edge of the circuit on the exit of St Mary's, drifting his way into Lavant. It's, un it's going to be possibly down to half a second, and good to see the number 14 Ferrari being driven so beautifully with so much experience that car. John Hugenholz pressing on tail end of the top ten, but he's got company, plenty of company. Benoit Crullier coming up from the tail of the field, trying to go round him, and in behind Nick Maiton, the white E-type. He's done it. With oh, the red roof. That was good. That was lovely, the way he dived up the inside. You, you see the occasional overtake there that works well, and uh, that was actually beautifully done, and in fact, Hugenholz is going to have to watch out. He might be losing two or three more places. Yeah, it could be a very cruel half lap for him. No sooner had I said he's driving beautifully. Unfortunately, he is, but the driver's behind that a little bit quicker, and certainly Benoit Collier not only proving he's quick as he comes up, but he's also very, very positive with his overtaking. So, there we are, back with the two leaders, and it's still nothing to choose. It was point two as they went over the line that time. Very, very close. And they're lapping one of the Lotuses as well, getting past it safely. Mark Gordon in the Lotus Elite. That car's done um, much racing over Europe. Hasn't got the straight line speed to run up front with the Cobra and E-Type here at Goodwood, but still having a lovely run out fire this afternoon. But this is the race for the win in the Moss Trophy. At the moment it's still Alex Buncombe who fought his way in front, sliding around a bit there. You know, what I wouldn't discount in this, it looks like it's a two-horse race, but not that far back in third place is Ollie Bryant. I think the traffic works against him. It may well be these two cars in front, the AC Cobra of James Cottingham in second place, the number 22 E-Type in the lead. The race are marginally faster, but uh, how far of the race have we got to go? Eight and a half minutes remaining in this 20-minute race, but, uh, well, two tenths of a second on the start finish straight. But like so many races, the Goodwood members meeting, we have power against handling, and it's and the E-Type that has the handling. Who breaks later would be the lighter E-Type, surely, down to Woodcut. You're right, he does break later, but they were absolutely side by side there for a moment, and it looked like Cottingham was going to get the chance. We've got a car limping one of the Aston's. It's missing Lost. the front wheel. I yeah. think that's the Dwight Merriman's car. Yes, number three, the American racer. Well, he was so excited about racing here. There's there the wheel. His, his wheel. Great camera work again. Wow. So we suddenly saw it dip down. The wheel has come off. It's not the first wheel we've seen come off a race car here today, but it's always a concern. Thankfully, I don't think it's done too much other damage. Let's, oh, that's where it, that's where it went off. It's always a worry with bouncing wheels, but it's bouncing in a straight line, and the barriers did a, a fantastic job. The tie wall slurring down, but the sparks coming underneath it. it I love DB4 GTs. That gives me a, yeah. a little spasm of pain, I'm afraid. There's some uh, suspension arms that are going to have to be replaced. They've been ground hard by that uh, sparking along the tarmac, but that was the wheel, and thankfully it hasn't uh, gone into an area where the marshals were, so that is OK. They have put out a yellow flag, and there you can see yeah, the damage being done to that front disc as well, front suspension, and then pulling over to one side. At least you can take it to an area that is safe down at that section. So back with the leaders. The race is still underway. There's no need for a safety car uh, as he's managed to take it to a safe place. And it's still Buncombe versus Cottingham. E-Type versus AC Cobra for the win in the Moss Trophy. Ollie Bryant still running in third place. Quite a lonely third. As you mentioned, he's a, he's a few seconds further back but he's got no one behind him either, so it's a bit of a quiet race for him. Yeah, he lost out again with the traffic, but I actually think the pace of that car has really fallen away, and the big question, can those behind catch him? But really the big question is, can James Cottingham get close enough for that AC Cobra to try and pounce to pass Alex Bunker? But as you can see, there is traffic out there, and Christopher Scully <laughs> sort of doesn't really know where to go because he has cars overtaking to the left, to the right. Hugenholz was on one side and Craig Davis to the other, but he did a great job not to change his line. Nick Maiton goes through as well past uh, the older Jaguar, and he gets a very good exit from Lamb, he's going to be taking a run on, on Craig Davis in front of him, but Craig moves across to grab the kink on the run down to Woodcut Corner. This is a fabulous, fabulous sight, and you get that little moment where the track comes across, oh, driver's break. right. Late break, and, they, and one of them gets past the Ferrari, both of them get past the Ferrari. That worked well for the E-Types, didn't it, on that occasion? sheer artistry these cars you can see them up on their tiptoes skeetering around and again some brilliant camera angles oh but that wasn't how you want to exit the chicane craig davis is surely going to lose out to nick mate and the white e-type with the red roof taking a charge as they come up towards 
Patrick Madrick, but again we see Craig has got a lot of grunts. He gets the power down beautifully out of the chicane. Look at this though, battle for the lead is still as close as ever. It was only two tenths as they went over the line. It still looks like that to me at the moment. That slightly different style, you get a front wheel on the Cobra, always lifting a bit more than the E-Type. The E-Type doesn't lift the front wheels quite the same level as the Cobra does, but he's really got a good run here, Cottingham but not quite once they get to an area where they're on the break that's where alex buncombe has the advantage once again with e-type goes in quite deep but that's okay you often go in a little deeper into the first part of that corner cut back into the apex and that's been done very stylishly now they're through the chicane neither of them giving up no these are proper racers uh, the emphasis being on people who race and race hard and uh don't offer the inside. If you want to come past me in your AC Cobra, James Gossingham, I only get letting you have the outside. You've got more grunt, I've got more handling, and the car's set up very differently indeed. But uh, they will respect each other, and they won't want to put these cars at risk. But look, oh. the eyes of Alex Bunker were so large, he looks in his mirror, and now alongside him comes the AC Cobra. Oh, he's grabbing the lead, and has a good section of the track for him to do that, because there may be a chance to stay out in front, but the E-Type's coming back. Alex Buncombe looking for a chance to get back past through St Mary's. Through the right into the left. There's a dab on the brake before they go into the left. Off camera on the exit. Don't run too wide. Beautifully done. Now they've got to get onto the brakes again and get a really good exit out of this right-hander to take them onto the straight. You can see how actually uh, Cottingham did that. He went in quite slow to get on the power as early as possible. Exactly so. The AC Cobra not as good under the brake under braking as the Jaguar, but the Jaguar wasn't given the option of where to place the car. So for uh, Alex Buncombe, very frustrating indeed, but very very clever driving there from James Cossing, the grunt of the AC Cobra, even though it's one of the smaller engines of the AC Cobra range, enough to punch him clear, going down to Woodcote, but he's the one who has to hang on as they turn past the daffodils, no time to admire those at the moment, but again, sideways on the exit of Woodcote, and then snaking through the chicane, James Cossingham taking the lead for the first time in this race and trying to punch clear, but you know what, Alex Buncombe is far from finished. Yeah, no, Alex is not over yet, very experienced GT racer, and uh, loves the classic, uh, racing as well he's raced a lot here at Goodwood over the years so of course has James they both had tremendous experience around this track James is son of uh, David Cottingham who runs DK engineering they prepare a lot of the cars that are here this weekend great not engineering knowledge they know how to get the best out of their cars uh, but these two drivers are really going to push it all the way to the chequered flag just under three minutes to go in the Moss Trophy Ollie Bryant still running in third place Gregor Fiskin is running in fourth John Spears who had that little moment in the Red Cobra he's still running but he's in fifth and Trelouillet is now up into seventh place and uh, I'm not sure he's only a couple of seconds behind his next rival so there is still a chance that he's going to uh, find a, another place or two perhaps before the end. I don't yeah, know. I sense he should be able to catch what we think is uh, the Rory Butcher, the touring car racer in William Paul's uh, red E-Type number five. But right now the dynamic very different at the front because having the AC Cobra leading the Jaguar E-Type, uh, so costing him ahead of Buncombe, it's a different equation when they go through the points where one of the cars has an advantage and the absolute advantage for costing him, he has more grunt. So if he can set it up nicely for the first part of Lavin, get the power down as soon as he possibly can before the second part, he should be able to pull clear. Yeah, we just saw John Spears going through. There is Trellier, and he is now running in seventh place. As you can see, he's not quite at all. Lovely wheel spin, lovely control there. And you get a great view. The, 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 under, the rear under section of the E-Type, so pretty. It's almost like a Venturi, isn't it? It isn't a Venturi. They didn't use it for aerodynamic effects, but it has that, that beautiful curve under the back of the E-Type. Yeah, absolutely glorious, and uh, so uh, John Spears has got ahead of Gregor Fiskin there, the 62 Jaguar, not going backwards, more to the point that the recovering John Spears is going forwards in that red number two AC Cobra. Very narrow compared to the later ones with the bigger engines, but very, very pretty indeed. But again, good grunt, and uh, John Spears using that very well indeed. So we have uh, one and a quarter minutes to go. Whether they're going to get another lap in, I think they probably will. Let's just see. It's going to be a bit tight. Um, James Cottingham ahead of Alex Buncombe for the moment. But the gap still just over one second. Good racing going on further back now. John Spears just getting past Gregor Fisk in there. And Spears getting himself back into fourth position. And uh, here's Trollier again on the charge, seeing if he can gain another place. And he does do so. So that brings him up into sixth position. 
So he has gained wealth, considering he started right from the back. That's that's a good move up the order, isn't it? Hey, that's very, very impressive indeed, because some of the drivers at the back are doing their best, but they're nowhere near the pace of those at the front, and it does sometimes make it very hard indeed. You get a little bit held back, but as I said, he gained about a dozen places on the opening lap, and that was the key to this run-up through the field, with Nick Mason coming through as well. Nick's up to ninth position, while Ben Trollier up into sixth, so he's made the better of it. But then again, with his Le Mans winning pedigree, you'd rather expect that. Beautifully driven. It's a very balanced car, this number 80 car, and uh, I have to say, he's putting on a wonderful demonstration with it so far. Um, Spears having to watch out a little bit because uh, Fiskin is not giving up on that fourth place. He's still right there with the E-Type. Yeah, just a half a car length between them, and as they accelerate, to, and then have to hit the brakes heavily to set the car up for the chicane. The short blast from Woodcut, it really does go in a very quick blink of the eye. But who makes the better exit? We've got uh, the clock has gone to zero. It has the chequered flag come out. It won't yet because it has to come out to the race leader, and that is James Cossingham. He's probably got two thirds of a lap to go in the number 59 AC Cobra. Started from the outside of the front row, works his way past those two E types, and looks as though he's got this one in the bag, Ben. Yeah, he's got to get this last part of the lap done he's still sliding the car working those tires very hard but as you say that gap that he's got over Alex Buncombe is looking pretty comfortable now it does look as though this Moss trophy is going the way of the AC Cobra as opposed to the Jaguar E-Type a fight between the two types of car and uh, of course the AC Cobra coming up to some traffic so he's flashing his lights he does not want to get caught here because it could make a last minute change if he gets slowed down too much coming up to the Lotus and the Chevy it is slowing him down and it could give a chance to buck him but he's got a decent exit out of the chicane the Lotus getting out of his way and fair enough the checkered flag is out and he takes victory it is a win for James Cottingham